is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a faithful God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm just going to continue, not like, I'm just going to continue talking about the fear of the Lord, you know, because it's, it's very vital for our lives right now, you know. It's very vital for you and me to have that fear of God upon our lives because none is exempt of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need God in our lives like that. We need to examine our own hearts. Hallelujah. We need that. <laughs> wow. When we're in Christ, we need to always examine ourselves. We need to examine our hearts and say, Holy Spirit, search my heart. You know, because it's very vital for each one of us, because we want to stay in a place where, you know, our hearts, we stay in a place where we we not uh, the right word, that we got it all made up. That's pride, right? That's messed up. When we always say, when we say we got this, that we are messed up like that, huh? Because we got nothing, you know? We have nothing because we need the fear of God in our lives like that, that we stay in a place that we examine our own hearts where we are standing because the days that we live in, they are critical. You know, everywhere you find that the enemy wants you to compromise your life as a Christian. So as a Christian, what do you do? You have to stand in what you believe. You don't compromise. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what, when someone even takes a knife and put it on your neck, you have to stand for what's right. You have to stand for the truth as a child of God. You don't shake, you don't waver. You don't shake, you don't waver. You ask us because this is something that we, we have to live that kind of a lifestyle that we know that God is God and he changes not. And we know and we stay in a place that we, you know, our hearts are examined as we pray in the morning, as early in the morning as we pray and do anything that you do, you ask the Lord, Lord, what should I do? Because some of the things we want to take you out of your, out of your character. Because we should, as the children of God, and when someone say, when they look at us, they should see that we are Christians, how we walk, how we talk. You know, because the Bible says that you shall know the tree. You shall know the tree by its fruits. Because when we're bearing fruit, we should bear fruit that brings life, that nourishes, that makes you healthy as a child of God. He say, you shall know the tree by its fruit, you know? And so what am I saying here? I'm saying that it's important for you and me to stay in that place that we examine our hearts all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We examine our hearts where we are, where are we standing? Because we need to have that in that uh, um, singleness of heart towards God, because your heart cannot be divided. Because it has to be single. You know, I'm talking about oneness in your heart, concerning the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I just want to go here. I'm just trying to look for this scripture, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to go here. I just want us to go here. I think I'm going to find it, though. I'm going to find it. I'm, ju I'm just going to go back here. I just want us to go quick there to the book of Exodus chapter 1. I'm just going to go there. I want us to look at these <laughs> powerful, strong women, you know, who never waved. They never waved their walk with God. 
They say, whoa, we'll rather obey the king, we'll rather obey God than the king. And despite the consequences, despite the consequences, you know, despite the consequences, they're like, whoa, we'll rather obey God than man. Whether we're going to get hanged or chopped off, whatever that comes with it, well, uh, we we'll rather we know that we're being chopped for eternity. But if we obey the king, when we die, going straight to hell with that. You know? <clears throat> wow. I'm telling you. Because when the doors are shut like that, when you shut that door that the enemy is trying to open in your life for you to, to act out of your character, then, hey, you know, because they wouldn't budge that. They wouldn't budge that. They didn't want to act out of their character because they didn't know how to act the other way. They only knew one way. And it's God's way. They didn't know any other way. So you can, you can see here how this story comes in because I want to take it to another story so that we see what goes on here, you know, because the fear of the Lord, it shifts and turns things around in your life in a way that even when people see it, they're like, ah, they're with God. They're with God. They will know it. You know, look at what the word says here. We'll start from, you know, we'll start from um, verse 8. It says, now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He didn't know that Joseph was used by God <laughs> so mightily. You know, he went through a lot, Joseph went through a lot, but despite that, you saw how God raised him. Despite being in prison, despite being lied about, Joseph didn't waver. He knew his God. You know, that woman wanted Joseph, wanted to rape Joseph. She said, oh no. He ran because that woman wanted to cause Joseph trouble. He's like, whoa, I survived the death from my brothers and my family. Hey, woman, you have lost your mind. You think I will settle for anything less and mess up my life like that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Get away from me. That's what she did. That's what he did. He's like, whoa. No way, he ran for his life because that woman was coming at Joseph to seduce him, you know, to, to bring him law, to bring him to nothing, to him to law. That's what she wanted to do. And then, <laughs> you see, when God called you, It's not that he didn't know that you'll go through so many things in your life, you know, because there is a making, he's making us to the beautiful as a porter. We are the clay. That means if there is any crack, he takes that clay and mash it again and mold it and shape it again until it comes out to be a perfect vessel, a vessel of honor. Joseph fulfilled which that God had called it to do. Joseph, he fulfilled which that God had called him to do. Through trials and tribulations that he went through. But because he had a fear of God upon his life, he wouldn't waver. 
He wouldn't compromise his life. Why? Because he had a call upon his life. Because he was born for such a time as, he, uh, as that. Such a time as this to bring deliverance. Not only for the Jews that went to buy food to Egypt, <laughs> but for the whole world. The Bible says for the whole world. People went to Egypt to get food. And it was the young Jewish man. The young man. That God used, full of wisdom from God. All it was planned by God. He, could, he would have missed it because of that woman. But he was taken to prison for God was keeping him and making him and shaping him in that prison. That when he came out, he, he was ready to fulfill which that God had called him to do because he was fulfilling which that God was calling him to do even in prison. Because Joseph was different from everybody else. And he, he found favor with the king and everybody else. And this king here didn't know Joseph. He didn't know Joseph. <laughs> wow. He said to his people, Behold, the Israelites are too many and too mighty for us, and, and they outnumber us both in people and in strength. What? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Look at this. So he was plotting and planning, you know? He was plotting and planning. He looked at them. He's like, wow. Mm -hmm. They look so healthy, so handsome, so beautiful. The women are pretty. The men are so handsome. Everything is this glow about these people. But you look at the men. The men were strong and full of... <laughs> Ah, God, we, God is so good. Mm. And you look at the women, they were so beautiful. Mm. Women that were so beautiful, you look just like, wow, okay. These people, these people, they, 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 they're strong. They got it all, you know? And then what does he do? He says, come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they what? They multiply more and should war befall us. They join our enemies, fight against us, and escape out of the land. Wow. This is the plot of the enemy. So they set over the Israelites taskmasters to afflict and oppress them with increased burdens and the Israelites built uh, pin, uh, panthoms and Ramses as, uh, as store cities for, for Pharaoh. But the more the Egyptian oppressed them, the more they multiplied and expanded so that the Egyptians were vexed and alarmed because of the Israelites. Look at that. How the enemy gets so tormented. Huh. The enemy was so tormented. And they didn't do anything, you know. But the devil was so tormented in a way that he was lying to them. Mm. And so they were oppressing them harder, but they grew. They increased. There was overflow in every area. Look at that. Look at that, what the word says here. Wow. Wow. 
the more you being oppressed, the more that they were being oppressed, they increased. They enlarged. They became strong and mighty. Isn't that amazing? That's what God was doing with them. Wow, look at that. The Bible says that they were taskmasters. They task master, They were taskmasters to afflict and to oppress. That means they afflicted them and oppressed them with increased burdens. And the Israelites built Pantom. Uh, it says Pantom and Ramses and store cities for Pharaoh. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiply and expanded so that the Egyptians were vexed and alarmed because of the Israelites. Wow. Wow. Where there was oppression, where there was affliction, the Bible says there was more coming for the uh, for the Israelites there was more increase they grew they God enlarged their territory you know and he blessed them abundantly and he strengthened them they were strong hmm? that means they were strong and mighty because for them to be fearful this way and plot to do such a thing that means what they were seeing <laughs> Wow. They were, they were, they were, I mean, they were messed up in a way that they were tormented in their own minds and their thinking. Wow. Wow. And the Egyptians uh, reduced the Israelites to severe slavery. They, they, they were slaves to the Egyptians. They lured them down to be slaves. Wow, because of the spirit of envy and jealousy. That was it. You can see that. They were envious and they were jealous. They wanted what the Egyptians, they wanted what the Israelites had. Wow. They made their lives bitter with hard service in, in mortar, brick, and all kinds of work in the field. All their, their service was with uh, harshness and uh, severity. Wow. They were building. They were planting. Name it. They were walking all day in the heat. It didn't matter. But what they didn't understand that the more you work like that, the more strong you become. Because they were eating garlic <laughs> and, <laughs> and herbs and all the good, good things. Huh? So they were strong. They were not suffering that they didn't have food. They never lacked anything. Mm. So they had it all. Look at that. David said in the word, didn't David say that? That I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, their children begging for bread. Huh? Oh, wow. Look at them. They were flourishing in the midst of oppression and affliction. They were flourishing, overflow. Why? Because the hand of God was upon their lives. They had the favor of God upon their lives. Wow, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew wives, midwives, of whom one was named uh, Shifra and the other was poor. 
Mm-hmm. When you <laughs> when you when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the uh, on the bedstool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. <laughs> wow, seriously. You coming to the midwives, the Hebrew midwives, and say, kill your children. Just chop the boys. I don't think so. I'm not going to be part of your sin, you murderer. Mm. They're like, he's, he, must, he must be gone longer, you know, because this is, <laughs> he wants us to kill our children. <laughs> You've gone, you've gone, really, you've lost your mind. You've lost your mind, devil. Hmm. But the midwives feared God because they were Jews. They were midwives. Jewish midwives. You're telling us to kill our own children. How dare you, devil? No way. There is no way. Wow. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded, but let the the male babies live. That's right. Hey. You see, when God has called you to do something, he's called you to do something and separated you for that. You don't compromise anything. Because these women stood in what they believed and they understood that, no, we ra- we rather die than live for these children to die. we rather die than these children to live. we rather fear the Lord, you know. We reverend fear the Lord. The Lord said, don't touch these kids. This is our children. These are our children. Why should we kill them? Should we be part of this sinful thing to kill our own children? They said, no, I don't think so. We're not doing that. They said, no. But the midwives feared God and do not do as the king of Egypt commanded, but let the male babies live. Wow. They're like, oh, no. We're not going to be part of your sinful ways. Mm. Because they didn't want to partner with them in sin. Because if they murdered the kids, the children, that means they were going to be murderers too. Partnership. Friendship. If they turn their eyes, their blind eyes, say, let's just go ahead because we'll find favor with the king. I'm sure that day they were going to die too and lose everything and lose everything so what am i saying here you can see what the word says here these women chose to stand for the truth they chose to fear the lord than men what did we say didn't we say that about the fear of the lord did, what did we say here about the fear? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to go here. Let's go to, uh, I think we, we did go to uh, Psalms. No, uh, let's go to Proverbs. I think it was Proverbs. I think it's here, Proverbs. Look at what Proverbs say here, Proverbs 29. I think that's where we were. Proverbs 29, verse 25. 
Hey, hey we, oh, oh yeah, we went here. Yeah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I just want us to come here back a little, little, little bit. We say it here, verse 20, we say 24. Whoever is partner with a thief hates his own life. Because if you are partner with a thief, that means you become a thief. If you are partner with a murderer, you become a murderer. You know, it says here, a it says whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. You know, he falls under the curse pronounced upon him who knows who the thief is, but what discloses nothing. They, they keep quiet. That means you're part of it. Because if they were going to be silent and kill those children silently, the two of them, because he approached two of them. Huh? If they were going to be silent and just go ahead and just kill, you know, and, and turn a blind eye like, ah, oh, these children are just dying. You know, because he approached the, the two women to just do that in secret. And he found out that they didn't do that because they didn't want to partner with the murderer. They refused and rejected that and say, we are not going to kill our children. We're not going to watch our little boys die because of a person who is envy and jealousy and wants to sabotage the whole generations of children. That devil is a lie and the, and the truth is not in him in Jesus' name. So he who partners with a thief, he wanted to steal. He wanted to kill. He wanted to destroy. That's what the devil comes to do, you know. He was, that's what the Bible says here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. The devil comes to kill, steal it, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, that's what he comes to do. And that's, he was standing there. He wanted to do what he always, always wanted to do. He wanted to kill. He wanted to steal, kill, and destroy a people, a generation. Because he saw that they were prosperous. And he wanted to take it away from them. And he didn't care that he wanted to take it away from them. He didn't care. Look at what uh, John 10 said. John 10, 10. Uh, John, oh, sorry, yeah, John 10, 10 here. What does the word say? It says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they may have, they may have in, and, and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. That's what was going on, really. Yeah. Because they decided to obey God and disobey the king. That's what the word says here. That the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus, he says that I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Huh? Because if they were going to obey the king, that means they're going to be destroyed. But they chose to disobey the king and obey God. And then what happens? It was flourish. My God. Overflow. Because they chose life in God. Whether we perish, we perish. You know, whether you perish, we perish. But they chose life. Mm. They chose life. They, we're going to stand for the truth and we are not budging. You know, we're going to stand for the truth and we are not budging. It says here, verse 25, 
It says, the fear of man brings a snare. But whoever lean on, trust in, and put his confidence in the Lord is safe and set on high. Wow, look at that. Because, because of their obedience, what happens? Because of their obedience, they were what? They were promoted. Because promotion can only come from God, not man. Because if they had decided, you know, to do wrong with, to those children, they wouldn't have seen that promotion. They would have seen death. If they had disobeyed God and went, with, and, and went along with what, whatever the king wanted them to do and killed those little children, they would have perished those little children. You're messing with God's people. Nothing flies like that. Nothing just goes. Because they were not being right. If they were killing those kids, if they were going to kill those kids. Wow. There's a scripture that I'm, I'm looking at here. Wow. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that I'm looking at here. I'm just going to go there and just read it quick. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. These that I'm looking for, I just want to read it quick. I'm just going to find it. Because the, every one of us, our lives is in God's hands. God is a purpose and a plan for our lives. You know, he has a purpose and a plan for our lives. The Bible says it. You know, the Bible says it. Hmm. Ooh, wow. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I'm looking for the scripture. I want to give you a scripture here. Wow. You know, when, um, when you are born to do something in your generation, the hand of God is upon your life, you know, and you have to fulfill which that God has called you to do without compromise. You can't compromise God is, is, has called you and separated you for such a time as this. You can't compromise. You know why? Because these women, if they had compromised, they were going to perish with those children, I'm telling you. Because you see that they feared the Lord. They wouldn't do such a thing. They knew better, you know. Would you want the favor of the king or the favor of God in your life? What would make you to compromise your life that way, in a way that, you know what, that's a mark that you're putting on your life like that. You choose to compromise your life like that. They refuse to compromise their lives. They refused to compromise their lives because they saw what was coming. Because you don't disobey God, you honor the Lord. The reverent fear of God, it keeps you in check. Ah. In awe, you like, whoa. Ah. Now you see, we're talking about, I'm going to shift a little bit, you know. Because I want you to look at Esther. 
Because she was born such a time just like those midwives. There is a reason in every scripture. They, in every, every person in the Bible, there is something about their lives that made a difference. In a good way or bad way. But you choose it this day. Whom will you serve? That's the thing. That's what they were here standing before the king and he was asking them, why? Why would you choose to disobey me, the king, my God? Wow. <laughs> but you see, the Bible says it here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The Bible speaks, you know. It speaks the fear of man. It brings a snare. They stood before the king, but he wasn't the king of kings. He was just the king over Israel. But they decided to, to obey God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They did it by faith. <laughs> because look at this here. When the children of Israel were being set up to be killed and be wiped out again. We see that it still goes on. Yeah, it's in the book of Esther. That is many generations. It's like something is going on here. You go to the book of Esther, Esther chapter 4. It says that, I'll just read here what the, word, what the word says here. It says that, verse 2, uh, I'll start from verse 4, I'll just read quick. It says, when Mordecai perceived all that, all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in, a, in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing. <laughs> oh my God. And many lay in sackcloth with ashes. Esther's maids and the, and the chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she set raiment to clothe Mordecai and to she's she sent raiment, she sent clothes to Mordecai with orders to take his, his sackcloth from off him, but he, wouldn't, he would not receive them. Then Esther called for Hetaj, one of the king's um, attendants, whom he had appointed to, to, attend, to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. So Hattach went to Mordecai in the open square of the city, which was in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened to him and exactly such of the amount of money that was what that Haman had promised to pay to the king's uh, uh, tre uh, treasuries for the Jews to be destroyed. They wanted to destroy the whole race of Jewish people. Mordecai, uh, he says, and then here he says, um, and then verse 8, it says, Mordecai also gave him a copy of the decree to destroy them. That was given out in Shushan that, the, that he might show it to Esther, 
explain to her and charge her to go to the king, make supplication to him and plead with him for the lives of her people. And Hattet came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hattet and gave him a message for Mordecai saying, all the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any person, be it man or woman, who shall go into the inner court to the king without being called shall be put to death. There is but one, one law for him, except him to whom the king shall hold out his golden scepter that that he may live. But I have not been called to come to the king for these 30 days. And <laughs> you see, you are thinking about yourself. How selfish. The whole people, nation, is gonna die, it's gonna get killed. You are thinking about yourself? Wow. Wow. How do you think about yourself in this situation? You know? How is that that you, your first answer is so your answer is not crying out for your people. Your answer is like, well, you know, I'm the queen here. And I haven't been called. It's like you're not thinking straight. They said people are going to die. People are going to die. They're going to lose their lives. Not only you, <laughs> you are not going to, you forget that you're Jewish too. It's going to affect your life. You're not going to live. You may think that it's going to only affect the Jews, but it's going to affect you. Whatever happens to the Jews, that means also it affects your life. <laughs> wow. This is so casual in such a critical moment that when you know and you know that when we you see your own uncle in sackcloth and he's crying out and you've heard it i'm sure you've heard he should be destroyed the whole people of israel should be destroyed and your your uncle is crying out at the king's gate no man should approach the king's gate in sick clothing, but your uncle is there and is crying out in sick clothing. That means it's critical like that. Whether I perish, I perish. Because he knew he shouldn't have done that, but he risked his life, Mordecai, and went there with the sick cloth and stood by the king's gate. He was sitting right there weeping and <laughs> he was weeping when they tore their clothes. They, that means brokenness. They were fasting and praying because they knew what was coming. Wow. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I just want you to look at here. She answered him with that casual answer, like, well, this is what they say, and we, everybody knows about it. So what do you want me to do? I haven't been called for how long? 
<laughs> oh, wow. For 30 days, I wasn't called to the, the king. To see the king. I haven't seen the king for 30 days. What you would do? Because you're talking about yourself. That you're being self-centered. Self, just selfish. And they told Mordecai, verse 12. What Esther said, then Mordecai told them to return this answer to Esther. You know, a word of rebuke is good for each one of us. You know why? Because it brings you back to your right mind, your right senses. Because if you're not thinking straight, a word of correction, because God rebukes those that he loves. Then Mordecai told them to return to answer to Esther. Do not flatter yourself that you shall escape in this king's palace at any more than all the other Jews. Because you're a Jew. Don't flatter yourself. God is a God of strategy. And he's a God of order. In everything he does. It says, then Mordecai told them to return to this answer, to return this answer to Esther. Do not flatter yourself, young lady. I raised you right in the house of the Lord. I taught you the word of the Lord. Jesus. You should know better. I not. I won't even do it with an accent. Know better. No, you should know better than that. Flatter, flatter. No. He says, "Do not flatter yourself that you shall escape in this king's palace any more than all the other Jews, because you were raised in my house in the ways of the Lord." You were raised in my house, in the house of the Lord. How is that? That Esther tend to be like this. People are crying out for their lives. They're shaken. They're going to die. But Esther, look at what the word says. Verse 14. For if you keep silent, we talked about the person keeping silent. We read that just that scripture. At this time, relief and deliverance shall arise for the Jews from elsewhere. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. <laughs> and for this very occasion, just that. Who knows? Those women, two Hebrew women midwives, that they were born for such a time to bring deliverance for the children of Israel to protect the little boys from the wickedness and the plots of the wicked king. How distorted and perverse that someone will come and say, just slaughter your children, kill them. And then what? I give you a dollar? Something that will perish. Something that you go eat, buy something to eat, and then you go to the bathroom and it's, it's gone. You forgot. But those children, 
they have to live for eternity. Because those midwives, they are remembered today because of what they did. Because if they didn't do what they did, it was another story. Maybe someone else would be written instead of them. Their name, I'm telling you, their names wouldn't be written like this. Maybe someone else's name would be there. You see that word that came for Esther to rebuke Esther, to set her straight in her mind and thinking that, hey, don't think of yourself as if you're better than everybody else, that everybody else gonna perish but you. You will live in that, in that, in that palace, enjoying all the state and everything. <laughs> and the garlic. <laughs> and the chicken. <laughs> oh, oh, that. Who knows? I'm telling you, <laughs> he was enjoying all the, the good things and the delicious things. Now he's, her family, in trouble. And it's like, what? Huh? Uh-uh. So Mordecai had to set it straight. That, oh my God, don't flatter yourself. Oh God, come here. You're flattering yourself. What is that? <laughs> Don't be so dramatic here. Think straight. You were born for such a time as this. For God to use you to bring deliverance. <laughs> oh my God. For the children of Israel. But if you're not going to be obedient, if you're not going to fear the Lord and go ahead and do whatever you want to do and ignore us, <laughs> you're going to perish with everybody else in your family. But deliverance, we're going to leave you and your whole family going to perish. But deliverance is going to come from somewhere else. God's going to raise someone. Just like the, 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 the two midwives. They're like, oof, wow. We fear the Lord. You know, but look at what happens here. I'm going to finish here. Look at what the word says here. As the word says that. Thank you, Jesus. It says that. Verse 14 says, for if, for if you keep silence, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to, to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knoweth? Who knows why you how you came or why you came to the kingdom of God at, at this at this time? Why you were born in such a time as this? You were born because God had a purpose and a plan, because God sees everything. He knows everything. Mm. <laughs> He knows everything. He sees everything. So nothing, there's nothing that God doesn't know, doesn't see. Mm. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Then Esther told them to give his, this answer to Mordecai. Go gather together all the Jews that that are present in Shushan and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink nor for three days, night and day. I also and my maid and my maids will fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if it, I perish, I perish. Look at that. So Mordecai went away 
and did all that Esther had commanded them. Now you're thinking. Now you're straight. Because if that word didn't come like that, she wasn't going to do that. You know? But she had to get a word of rebuke to be set straight. It shook her to, to the core, to her right mind. Because she was born for such a time to bring deliverance for the Jewish people. She was born for such a time. Just like the, the two midwives. They were born for such a time to bring deliverance to those, to those children, to the Jews in Jesus' name. They decided to obey God, not man. They decided to obey God, not the king. They reverently feared the Lord God Almighty and not men. That's where things went the way they went. Look at what the word says here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want us to look at a scripture here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now she, she decided whether I perish, I perish. That means it doesn't matter whether I perish, I perish. I'll go and see the king. I just want us to go to the book of Proverbs quick. You know, sometimes we can look that the word, the 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 way how she answered everything is like, you know, you know what what goes on here. It's so light, you know. It's so light. Hey, I'm I'm protected. I'm the queen. You know, people are crying outside. They're in sackcloth. They could hear the cry. The people say it's a news travel. There was no internet, there was no, but news travel. Hmm. You know, those women, those midwives, they really, they, they went before the king. Going before the king was like, whether I perish, I perish. They took their first step, they, were, they knew who they were. Whether we perish, we perish. They knew who they were. I just want us to look at uh, Proverbs here because you, the Bible says that do not be wise in your own. In, 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 do not be wise in your own eyes, you know. That's what the word says. Look at the, what the Proverbs say here. I want to go there. I'm going to go to Proverbs 3 quick. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Look at what the word says here. Be not, be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. Wow. It says that, wow, it shall be health to your nerves and your sinews and marrows and moisturing to your bones, to your life. This is what the word says, to your life, really. You know, it says that be not, be not be wise. It says, be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. You know, you can't turn a blind eye, Esther. No. You need to calm down. You need to know your purpose, the core, why you were born, 
That's why the Bible says, present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. You know? He says that. Why in that? You know why? Because I would just go there quick in the book of Romans. Romans 12. Look at what it says, verse, verse 1. It says to here, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, I beg of you in view of all the what the messes of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and your faculties as a living sacrifice, wholly devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is the what reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. And then it says what? Do not be conformed to this world, this age fashioned after the adapted to its, its external superficial customs, but be ye transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may be, so that you may prove for yourself what is good and acceptable and perfect will, will of God. Perfect will of God, even the thing which is good, acceptable, and perfect in his sight for you. You want to know the will of God upon your life. When the word of rebuke came to Esther, she shifted in a moment because it hit straight to the core. The word of rebuke is necessary. That you examine your own self, examine your heart where you're standing. Are you for God or are you for the devil? Ask yourself, because it's necessary for each one of them, because you have to examine your own heart. He says, be not wise in your own eyes for the, you know, you don't be wise for your own eyes. In your own eyes, don't look at yourself like you are wise. Mm. Because God wants us to examine our own lives. What does the word say here? It says that the Bible doesn't want us, you know, do not be wise in your own eyes. It means that you don't have to be arrogant, self-sufficient as you think, you know, as if you are all knowing. That's deception. To me, that's, that's a lie from the pits of hell. God is the only all-knowing God, all-sufficient. That's who God is. Jesus. That's what the word says. But here, for you to know the will of God, what God has called you to do, we have to be in line. Amen. And uh, here, what the word says here, I'm going to go here in the book of Proverbs. Look at what it says here. In the book of Proverbs, it says here. 26, Proverbs 26, verse 12. I know I'm not going to go to that one. I'm not going to go to that one. I'm on the right one. It says, you see, that's what the, 
<laughs> Listen to this. The word says, it says, yeah, we'll go there. It says, do you see a man wise in his own eyes and concept? There is more hope for a self-confident fool than for him. Why? Because God doesn't want us to be self, you know, and think that we are self-sufficient because that's impossible. That's deception. Amen? That's a lie from the pit of hell we cannot be. That's, that's a lie, really. Amen? That's a lie from the pit of hell. It, it, that's impossible. Hmm. So God doesn't want us to be that kind of a person, you know, that we think that we are self-sufficient because we can never be self-sufficient. It's only God who is self-sufficient. Amen? And here, the scripture here says, uh, let me see. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to go here. I just want us to go here quick. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'm just going to go here quick today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Precious Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Psalms, the book of Psalms. Psalms 90. It says here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I think I'm just going to go here in... Uh, the 17th, I guess. I'm just going to go here. It says that... And let the beauty and the delightfulness and the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands confirm and establish it. Let the beauty and the uh, delightful and the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. That can only come. When you have the favor, of, when, when you have the fear of God upon your life. Because these things, when we cry out like this, look at that scripture. And let the beauty and the delightful, the delightfulness and favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands confirm and establish it. That can only happen when you have the fear of God upon your life. The reverent fear of the Lord. You can, be, you can say that when you know that you are walking in the ways of the Lord. And we are focusing on God. Amen. You can say these words and say, let the beauty and the delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. 
confirm and establish the work of our hands. Yes, Lord. You say, yes, the work of our hands, confirm and establish it. You can only say that when you have the fear of God upon your life, the reverent fear of the Lord. You know, why? Because we saw it with the women. The two midwives, God promoted them. The workers of their hands. Amen. What did God do for them? He blessed them. They were blessed of the Lord. We can say these words. Why? Because we reverently fear the Lord. And, doubt, and well, because we have no doubt in our hearts. Amen. We have no doubt in our hearts about anything. You know, we can say these words without doubt, without waving our faith in God. Why? Because we love the Lord. We reverently fear the Lord. So without doubt, we can say these words. Without doubt and unbelief. We can say these words. Hallelujah. Because it says, blessed are the works of your hands. You know? Blessed are the works of your hands. So we see what the word says here. We can cry out and say that. Wow. I will read this. I just want to read this uh, from verse 14. It says that, look at what the word says. All satisfy us with your mercy and loving kindness in the morning. Now, before we are old, before we are older, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad in the portion to the days in which you have afflicted, you afflicted us and to the years in which we have suffered evil. Let your work, the signs of your power, be revealed to your servants and your glorious majesty to their children. That means generations to generations. Amen. And it says here, you know, and let the beauty and the delightfulness and the favor of the Lord our God be upon us confirm and establish the work of our hands yes the work of our hands confirm establish it and establish it hallelujah thank you jesus we bless the lord amen because god is so good to us hallelujah thank you lord look at what uh psalms 30 verse 5 says yeah i'm gonna uh, Okay, so Psalms 30 verse 5 says what? Here. Oh, Look at what the, his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Whoa. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hmm. I am telling you. You see, when I see that, it's like when those women were going before the, 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 the when they went before the, the king, I'm sure there was trembling. There was fear. Amen? There was fear and trembling. But because they knew their God, that something is about to break out. Amen? Something good was about to happen. But here it's talking about for his anger. Who? God's anger is for a moment because God is a forgiving God. Amen? It's talking about the, the anger of God is for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. It's talking about the anger of God. Because God is full of mercy. Amen. He's loving. He's kind. 
He says, for his anger is for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. That those people, those women, and we can see when Esther fulfilled what God had called her to do, the favor of God, the children of Israel, they were saved. Amen. So the favor of God is for a lifetime. Or in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You may go through things in life. But you must know, if you reverend fear the Lord, God will see you through. Amen? You can endure whatever is going on, but God. He will show himself strong. You can go through whatever you're going through in your life, but you must know that you're not alone as long you have the, the, the reverent fear of God upon your life that you're not shaken, you're not moved, just like those women. They were not moved, they were not shaken. They stood there and they say, wow, we'd rather obey God than you, king. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to finish then because you want to come closer? Yeah, come on. You're right. Just close it. I'm done. You come on and close it. Yeah. I was talking about the fear of the Lord. Huh? But the midwives are king. Oh, praise God. Thank God. I pray you all been blessed by the message today. Amen. And uh, we'll, we'll close this evening. Praise God. We hope you were uh, blessed and edified by the word spoken today by Pastor Sozi. Amen. Talking about the fear of the Lord. But praise God. Uh, we just want to ask if before we shut, before we close for the evening, if you don't know the Lord, this is the most important part of everything. And I was sharing with someone the other day, and, you know, they believe in God. <clears throat> they say, yeah, I believe, and they were doing everything. We talked for a while. And then I started listening to what was being said, and then they started talking about different religions. But in my spirit was, like, to ask, so I said, uh, as far as, you know, trusting God isn't about, what's it called, doing works. I said, I, I asked, are you saved? He goes, I don't know. And I said, well, there, there, there's a thing right there. There's a problem. I mean, right there, if you're not assured, see, when you have Jesus, you have assurance. And I said the difference between Jesus and all the other religions, because all of them are works. And even Jesus talked about doing good works, but that isn't the difference between everyone. The difference is there's the cross, that Jesus died. All the other religions, they died too, but they didn't rise again. They also were born too, but they weren't born of a woman without a father. And in other words, they were born of God. That was Jesus. So you got two miraculous things besides the works he did. He was born of a virgin, but he also died, defeated the grave, defeated hell, defeated death, defeated sin. And no other religion did that because they're all based on works. They're like, am I good enough to get to heaven? No one's good, as the word said. There is none good, no, not one. So the difference is all the other Hinduism, Muslim, Ju even Judaism, all of the other religions are based on works as merits that you have good in sight of God. Well, God, one day, as it says in Revelation, he'll open the books of works. And he'll see the works that they did. But there is another book, just one book. 
See, he doesn't have a lot of books of the others because that's a bunch of works. But he got one book, and when he opens that, that's the book of life to see if your name's written in it that you believed and made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Because all those works mean nothing. It might have did something for people. It might have made you feel good. It may, might have made it like, hey, I'm doing great for God. They, listen, it says a man is saved by grace. That, that's what God did. Through faith, that's what you do, believe. And it says it's not of works. Why? Because you don't get the credit for it. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. And you can't buy it. All you got to do is believe on it. It isn't works to believe. It's trusting him. And when you do that, he says, you shall be saved. And so even if you walk the walk, yeah, when your heart's changed, you're going to want to please God. But before all that, it doesn't matter the works because there's none good, no, not one. I don't care how good because you're just measuring yourself to man. You're not measuring yourself with God, and God's perfect. The Word says in Deuteronomy, we read it 32 a. It says in 32 a what? God is good. He is our rock. He is perfect. There is no iniquity in him and no injustice. He's righteous, and justice is his works. So he's perfect. You're not. We're not. But if you think you could get to heaven by works, you've made a big mistake because you're wearing yourself out. But if you just believe on him, listen, in, I mean, I'm going to close, but in Judaism, to become Jewish, if you weren't Jewish, you know how many works you have to do? It's a lot to try just to become Jewish. You know what? Forget that, and I'm Jewish. It's just believing on what God did. No one Adam didn't make himself in the beginning. It wasn't made by his works. God made Adam from the dust of the ground. Why would God base your salvation on your own works? No, it's on your trust and belief that he died for you. He rose again, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and he said you'll be saved. That's the cross that divides A.D. from B.C. or B.C. from A.D. That divides the whole thing on that cross that day. That's the, line, that's the line drawn in the sand. And if you don't know you are going to make it to heaven, you better get things right with them because then you don't know your appointed day. And if you were to die... And I asked that if you were to die, would you go to heaven tonight? And that person was like, I, I'm not sure. Well, you need to make it right and get it sure. And the way you get it sure is not hard. It's just making him your Lord and Savior and asking for forgiveness because he already died, forgave you. You got to receive it in your life. So pray with me now. And you just say, Lord Jesus, I ask for you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you, Father, right now that I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, that he was buried and in three days he rose again. And I thank you as I receive him now as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' mighty name. And when you mean that, he says you're a child of God. You're saved. You're adopted into the kingdom. And your name's written in the plan book of life. It may like seem like, wow, that didn't take much. No, it just takes you to believe. And the next thing is, if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you, all you do is ask. And it says, if evil men know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them and ask them. All you got to do for those who need to be filled and empowered and those who just get saved, just say right now, Lord Jesus, I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to come in my life right now and fill me and fill me with the Holy Spirit that I have the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I thank you, Lord, for doing it in them right now that you confirm your word with signs following. Breathe your Holy Spirit. 
come into their life now and fill them in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Well, we hope you have a blessed evening. We thank you for watching us. We thank you for those who've been supporting and sowing into this ministry. We pray God, all God's grace abound toward you that you may have sufficiency for every good work. We love you. God loves you. Jesus is Lord. He's king. He's the soon coming king. And you have a blessed evening. God bless you.